I've worked for Greater Manchester Fire Rescue Service for 24 years. Um, all of those years I've been operational and I have been in the fortunate position to come and help people in distress. But unfortunately, I've also been there to see them at their worst periods in their life. Um, I've attended road traffic collisions, I've attended fires, chemical incidents, but to be honest, one of the most tragic incidents I've attended was a water incident involving a young man. We were informed of the incident um, on a hot summer's day. The crew had attended and recovered the body of a young teenage boy from a canal um, with his friends looking on. When I arrived, I saw a number of cars there, saw media vans, saw photographers, reporters. Uh, I parked up and I put my fire gear on. Uh, I noticed at the corner of my eye a group of people coming towards me. And as they grew nearer, a, a group of about 10 to 15, you could see a number of them holding hands, um, comforting each other and one particular individual in the middle of that. And that was a, a middle-aged lady um, who was uh, extremely distraught um, to the point of hysterical. Um, and they approached the canal where I was stood giving the reporters the information. And I stepped to one side because obviously I could see the upset they were in. And I then stepped back and heard them comforting the lady and talking about the young man and how much the young man had loved his mother, how much uh, they would all miss him. And it got worse and worse and worse. Uh, the individuals, the, the whole 15 of them, uh, were in tears. Um, those tears and emotion were a, a significant contrast to the lovely summer's day on the water side uh, where we were stood. And it really came home to me on that incident, the impact of losing somebody in those circumstances, which would seem quite um, a fun event of going into water to cool down on a summer's day, quite harmless, you'd, you'd expect. And whilst I'd learnt the safety messages and I knew the messages I had to get over to the media, there was no better way for that to be hammered home in my mind than seeing the distress of the family in front of my eyes. And as a father of five and four of those being teenage boys, I reflect on that moment every summer Every summer when my sons leave the house and they're saying they're going for a walk or going to play football with their friends, I hammer home not to go near water. Not because I don't think they can swim, because they've had swimming lessons, they've got all their badges, but because of the unknown things. The unknown of being on the water side and maybe their mate pushing them in, having a bit of fun and them hitting their head or not knowing what's under the surface of the water not knowing how deep it is, not knowing if they would have cramp or have shock of the cold water. All the rationale and all the reasons we give to young people to say, listen, you're not superhuman. There are dangers in that water that are unknown to you, unknown to us. And for five minutes of fun or a bit of a joke, a bit of a laugh, you're risking your mum, your dad, your brother, your sister, going through the trauma of losing you, not just for that one day, that one summer's day, but for the rest of their life. And thinking, is it really worth it? So as a consequence of that incident, I'm here today telling you about that experience and that's, um, is an indication really of how that incident has affected me. Um, as I said before, I am a father of five, uh, young teenage sons, um, but I've attended hundreds if not thousands of incidents 
and there's always incidents that stay in the back of your mind as an operational firefighter. Ones that um, make a difference because you came to somebody's assistance, you saw a positive result, or ones that impacted you on, on a personal level and, or professional level. Uh, this water incident, particularly how the family reacted at the scene, for obvious reasons, will always stay in my mind because it gave me a shock as a father of what would I do in their shoes? Would my sons risk their mother and their father being in that position? And how on earth you get over losing a child in that way? How do you honestly get over that and not look at a canal or an open water as a father who's lost a son in that way without that all flooding back. And every summer, every summer as an operational officer, I know that we will get a young person going into the water and a family will suffer for that five minutes of fun. I know that and every year we push these messages and we hope that people listen to us.